So does anyone have any questions or comments about? Uh, I, I think that the, in, in Finland, writing, writing about developing, uh, developing countries is slightly complicated because uh, if you go to travel there, you get the sponsorship from uh, uh, foreign ministry from the aid department that they will show that how well they are doing it, doing it with tax companies or with some kind of other interest that have, uh, have want to show something. So in that uh, balance, in that it's, it's quite easy to have a temptation to have a more, more or less uh, critical voices at the same time. And it's, it's uh, slightly difficult to get some kind of balance view or, or, or some kind of advice based view on what's happening. But uh, how do you see, what's, what's, what do you think about this kind of uh, uh, sponsorship relationship? Do you, are they, have you had a problems with it? Um, well, I think there's going to be discussion at a conference about sort of um, science journalists wearing different hats. So, uh, you know, can you, can you be an independent science journalist if you're receiving money from sort of a funding agency or something like that? I think there's a sort of, it's a sliding scale and there's different levels of, um, of that kind of sponsorship. So, for example, side of net, I mean, 50% of our funding comes from uh, aid agencies, so DFID, uh, uh, CEDA and places like that fund us, but we're still independent and the sort of uh, uh, our editorial output is fully independent of our funding, but certainly sort of you're aware of it and you, you're aware of where your funding comes from. I think when you come, when you get into sort of more specific projects where specific output is paid for by um, by different uh, agencies or, um, you know, funds, I think it gets trickier and I think uh, you know, most of these um, most of these partnerships uh, say that uh, you know the editorial output is still independent, but I think it's very tricky to keep that independent. I think it is um, it is probably challenging, and I think I don't know how it's going to change in the future. Uh, but obviously, there will be discussions at this conference. So I think it is people are thinking about it and thinking how does this influence journalism that we do if someone's you know if someone's paying for it. Um, I don't know. I mean, do you have any opinions yourself on the issue? I think that uh, the, that is uh, the problem is that usually, usually that what you don't see, you know, you have pro uh, some problems with our big forestry companies uh, existing, existing. But uh, okay, you go there, you see something, you don't know what you, you don't see. On the other hand, we know that. Uh, Shell, for instance, wanted to show so that they are doing something good and uh, that generated extreme bad, uh, extreme huge amount of bad will for Shell, Shell doing that kind of sponsorship. So it's uh, not uh, not easy issue or, or somehow simple. <coughs> so yeah. Other uh, other issue is that what what, is the, what are the trends? Is it the developing an interesting issue at all? What kind of are we interested in North Africa or Asia or South Africa at all? Well, it seems to be. I think I don't know. Uh, I mean, I work uh, and live in London, and I think in UK media uh, over the past few years, definitely, I think uh, I'm seeing more and more stuff in the media, especially places like the Guardian, for example. They've started the Guardian Development Network, and you know, side of net news feature there. Uh, and I'm seeing more and more uh, discussions about sort of this global issue of global development, I guess. But I think it's not so much aid per se. It's more about, you know, what they call global development and how do we, you know, get rid of poverty? How do we get food security, um, you know, to, to countries around the world? So I think in the UK media, at least, I'm seeing more and more of, uh, of reports on, on, on those sorts of issues. Um, and uh, I think within the sort of science journalism and science and development, I think certainly there are some voices and some people saying that we should cover um, private sector uh, more. So, you know, if Shell is doing something really good, maybe we should write about it. I think traditionally we haven't really because you, you always had that perception that if it's a private company, you know, maybe they're doing, you know, greenwash, maybe they're just kind of doing it for their PR. So it's not clear always what the sort of objective benefits of, what, of their projects are. But I think, uh, again, like there seems to be a, a bit of a push uh, in covering those sorts of things. And even within the uh, aid uh, business, I think if you look at the DFID and USA 
USAID, um, some of their new uh, projects, they're kind of there to encourage the private sector uh, and in, uh, encourage the innovation uh, of the private sector and sort of unleash private sector funding. So I think, again, there's more and more of, of that in, 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 the, um, in the sector as well. I'd like to ask you if uh, in London you face a problem which we have all the time in our newsrooms. Uh, say the ambassador of some important European Union nation uh, has a, a ceremony with the, our Minister of Finance, or as we now would call them Cabinet Secretary for Finance, and they are giving X million dollars here to fight malaria. Okay? And uh, we give it a very small mention because it was just a signing ceremony, but since they invited the press, we may not even use a photo. And that same week, you know, someone like Julia Roberts comes as Goodwill Ambassador for some small American non governmental organization nobody has even heard of. And, you know, we have her photo prominently. Julia Roberts started in this and that and that, was at this slum, maybe carrying a little baby, very photogenic, etc. And the communications people at the embassy will call and say, what's wrong with you people? Uh, we have a story here which is going to save about 100,000 children, giving them clean water or uh, providing them with treatment for malaria. And you give us two column inches. And this silly woman comes and she doesn't even know which country she's in and you give her half a page. And it's hard to explain that people are actually interested that, uh, I'm using Julia Roberts, actually I had another film star in mind, but she, she's never come to Kenya as far as I'm aware. But someone just as beautiful, many of them come. And, and, and uh, that, that's news to the, to the public. It's, both are public health stories. But one, in our eyes, is more exciting, more sexy than the other. Do you get such complaints at your level? Uh, not so much complaints, but I think there's definitely a, um, a challenge there because I think we all uh, want to have readers and we all want to have more readers. And I think with the online media, you, you, know, you want more readers, you want more hits and stories like that. You know, Julia Roberts is going to get more views than the story about finance minister meeting someone else. So I think that's the problem. How do you, you know, how do you maintain your audience and your impact as a media organization by doing serious stories, you know, doing stories on science and development and doing stories about aid, you know, uh, covering this new uh, new study that, you know, the aid, you know, that showed that aid does work when, you know, your competitor is doing something about this celebrity who's, you know, they're going to get better pictures, better headlines, more views. So I think that's a challenge and it's kind of a general challenge to do with uh, online media, I think, that's uh, affecting all of us. Um, and uh, yeah, we, I don't think we get complaints so much because we don't really do celebrity stories. So for side of net, at least we, 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 we stick to serious stories. Um, but I think that's definitely a growing challenge, especially for sort of commercial media that have to worry about those sorts of things. But even us, I mean, at Side of Net, we have to, you know, we have to present to our funders, you know, how many readers did we have. So to us, again, it, it matters how many readers we get. But we, we try not to get, I guess, you know, readers by, by uh, having celebrities on. We try to get readers by covering serious and relevant stories in an accessible way. Um, but I think that's part, it's really interesting what you said, because it's part of a global, uh, global uh, trend of sort of how do you reconcile those two things. And it also goes back to something what uh, the first speaker said was um, about, you know, the, for example, the climate change and how come that one skeptic is getting quoted when everyone, all the academics are not. And again, that's, that's a big problem for climate change uh, reporting. It's similar in, you know, evolution science reporting. Um, and I think uh, some of the aid stuff, I mean, if you look at the reports of aid and the sort of columns in British newspapers, American newspapers, I think, again, it kind of uh, relates to a bigger, uh, bigger sort of narratives within, the, within those countries and sort of, uh, you know, political divide between the left and the right. And, you know, the left sort of leaning reporters are more likely to cover stories like yours and say aid really does work, whereas then you see this sort of opposition saying, actually, no, we shouldn't be giving aid to these countries and aid doesn't work. And I think it kind of links, links back to that as well. And I think we can't sort of ignore those either narratives and political issues um, that, that media are embedded uh, in. And again, the economic crisis as well, I think that, that played a role as well, because I think now when you see aid stories, um, you know, you, they're often, um, 
put with that background of economic crisis? And should we be giving all this aid money now when we are actually in the West having less and less money to spend? Um, and uh, I think certainly when you talk about UK aid spending, you know, people people say sort of David Cameron's government's doing quite well to be, you know, still be giving their 0.7% of GDP to aid, even, even against this sort of uh, bad economy. And I think... Um, I think all of those things link in, and I don't think it's always sort of fair to say, oh, it's the journalist's fault, so it's, uh, they're not picking up our stories. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's not always journalists who are even choosing or picking stories. I think it's often editors and producers, uh, publishers. No, I mean, I, I hope that I, I, I meant to just try to get some discussion going. I am also recognizing that newspapers have to be sold and so on and so forth. Uh, at the same time, uh, thinking about, now you mentioned the aid debate in the UK, uh, there was this so-called Lords Commission uh, in the UK on foreign aid, right? And then you had this so-called distinguished professor who appeared for the, to give his, uh, what do you call it, witness or testimony. And you have this guy going on and on, and then he talks about, aid doesn't work, just look at Vietnam. There, you really see what the private sector can do. Now, which country in the world received most aid for 20 years up until 2008, in absolute terms? Vietnam. I mean, I, I mean, it's just, I mean, for me, it's just kind of an illustration of this thing that, 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 that sometimes, it, that, that, that would, I, I mean, I may be wrong, but I mean, isn't that a good story? That somebody called himself a distinguished professor and stands there and elaborates and elaborates and elaborates, and he doesn't have even his basic facts in order. I would have thought that was a story. But if anyone knows that, yeah, I think if, 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 if people notice that he doesn't have the facts straight, but I think as a journalist, you trust that people like him um, are, do, are saying good things. And I think, again, it links back to this online media and everything has to be online now. So I think... Uh, just the other day, uh, so David Cameron announced five billion, sorry, fifty million pounds to this new initiative, and uh, you know within within minutes it was up on the Guardian website. And if you look at it, it's sort of same, almost the same as the actual press release. So uh, the journalists didn't really go and talk to anyone about is this really needed or how is it going to be spent? What what are these innovations going to be like? They just kind of took the press release, and I think that's probably similar to what you're referring to as well. But sort of, I think it's a pressure from online media. As, as in your sources, uh, how do you see uh, the African universities and research institutions uh, as a as a source of your your reporting? Of course, at least in Finland, we know, unlike the press in Sweden, that uh, where the nation is on, on, on stress, the Nobel Prize is not the, the first priority for, for research, but. The, but it, it seems that there is a big change also happening now, now that you know, also the universities that they are not got any more just uh, educational institutions, but also generating information. Yeah, well, I think that's uh, that's an, sort of an acknowledged ch acknowledge challenge for um, African universities. They don't have good, necessarily good press release, uh, press um, offices and press releases, and even sort of the African journals and uh, um, academic institutions don't push their content as much. So I think it's always a challenge to get those stories unless you have journalists on the ground who, who have good contacts and who go and uh, attend various workshops and talk to scientists. But for us, definitely, we have that network in Africa. So I think we do report a lot on African universities and um, their research. Uh, but it's really, um, uh, for us, I mean, it really depends on those people who live in those countries and know those people. So, you know, they know res researchers or have good links with local universities and they can go and attend their events. I think if it wasn't for that, if we just had Western journalists sitting in the office in London or traveling to Africa, I think that'd be much much more difficult and much more challenging. But another thing I think for us at Side of Net, um, to us it comes easy to report on a sort of sudden view of development and of aid because we have people uh, from those countries, you know, citizens of those countries reporting for us. Whereas, um, you know, you often see uh, Western journalists going to Africa sometimes for the first time and then they write these stories about how surprised they were or how you know they found this fantastic research project and they didn't realize how well it was running 
Uh, and I think it's because uh, a lot of sort of Western journalists don't have that experience. So they've never been to Africa. They don't know what's happening. So, you know, you're writing, you're part of the sort of um, Western, uh, Western culture and, uh, you know, you sort of assume Africa is not doing well and, it, you know, it needs aid or aid's not doing much to help it. And I think those sort of framing of stories probably comes through for some journalists. Um, and I think it's good to have more journalists in Africa writing about aid and writing about Africa because then you get a different picture. You get a, you know, you get more views from uh, from recipients of aid and from uh, you know people to whom it matters. I'd like to give the last word to Wycliffe. I mean, when you write for the the Star, and when you comment for BBC, what sort of what's the difference for you? I mean, there are two fundamental differences. Uh, first of all, there's what I'd call shared assumptions. Like one of the points I wanted to make, uh, I had listed down, not really important, but still, something called NEPAD, New Partnership for Africa Development, which was very big news about uh, five to ten years ago. Uh, in Africa, if you say NEPAD, most people have an idea what you're talking about. If you are commenting for global radio, you'd better explain its new partnership for African development, which was initiated by the following presidents at this time for this reason, etc., etc. So you can't assume that people are aware. You also can't assume they're aware that malaria is transmitted by mosquitoes. You'd have to explain that people living near swampy places where there's plenty of malaria, where they will be bitten, etc. So that's the first thing. You cannot assume that people understand. Then uh, secondly, you, you need to be willing to oppose what I'd call local received wisdom. There are so many assumptions, especially on the subject of economics. Uh, most people will tell you we need more aid, not less. I mean, you mentioned that Bisa Moyo. The only time I find myself arguing about the Bisa Moyo is when I'm outside of Kenya. In Kenya, nobody cares. Nobody knows. Bill Easterly has zero influence. I'm not saying that that's a good thing. I'm just telling you what the situation is. What they care about is can we get more aid? Because as I said, their personal experience is they have seen somewhere where the French government brought a new water project and people benefited. The Japanese government built a bridge where there was no bridge and people benefited. Uh, the US government distributed free antiretrovirals and, and people who are HIV positive, their lives are saved. So we tend to see aid in those terms. And surprisingly often, because uh, although I was recruited by London, I'm based in Kenya, uh, what I do is what uh, it's called a letter letter from Africa. It used to be every week, but my current job makes it very difficult. Now that I talk about once a month. And uh, on all these things, uh, I find even my editors in London who are very well informed journalists. I mean, the BBC is a big thing. They always ask me, are you sure? So very often when I submit what I want to record for my commentary, I have to give them a list to fact check. For example, if I say, the inflation rate is so much, or interest rates are so much, they say, what, is it that high? Or if I say, so many lives have been saved, I, I indicate which newspaper did I get it from, or which report of the United Nations did I get it from. So, uh, you have to understand that you are essentially uh, preaching to people who have no real idea what you're talking about, and uh, you have to explain everything in some detail. Whereas in Kenya, if I'm writing for the local paper, there are so many things which I can take for granted the public already knows. So you almost take shortcuts and you just get to the heart of it because you don't have to explain everything from scratch. And it's, it's actually very demanding. I also used to be a columnist for a magazine called African Business, which is based in London, which is for all of Africa. And it was exactly the same. Uh, the editors would ask me, are you sure of this? Are you sure of this? Because they didn't know. And these are things I took for granted. So it's actually very difficult. Uh, writing globally and locally because it re requires a constant shift of perspective and that's why I was criticizing Finn because uh, his perspective in my view is only one way of looking at a very very complex picture. Uh, if you look at it in terms of the impact on the lives of real people on the ground, I'd agree with him completely that foreign aid has been a huge success but I would disagree with him because it's terribly addictive. People get used to interventions from outside. They stop looking for their own solutions. No, I mean, I, I, again, I, 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 I speculate about how much rum I need to become addicted. Thank you so much for you coming here.
It's been a great afternoon. Uh, I mean, the discussion could probably have continued for quite a while. And uh, but I think, thank you, Finn. Thank you, speakers, for, for coming here and, and contributing to this discussion.